All right, so hi everybody. Welcome to our next video with regards to lines. So this one is going to be on just the standard form of a line, which you can see there it's AX plus BY plus C is equal to zero. And we're working with um, uh, X and Y coordinate systems. Now, uh, I hope that you have watched uh, or you do understand okay, the um, slope intercept form. So that is the Y is equal to MX plus B. So I'm going to provide a link just up above so that you can watch it if you uh, haven't uh, studied it before. Uh, and then you can come back to this one. Now in the standard form of a line, so it is basically something which is defined for us, we basically try to move uh, both our X and our Y uh, variables into the left hand side and we have the form that you see there and I provided an example. So we have the example states 2x plus 8y minus 10 is equal to zero. So just so that you can see, okay, so this is considered the standard form and you would have your two would have been your A, okay, your eight is actually your B and then your C is negative 10. So you actually take in the sign with it. All right, so that would have been it. So C is negative 10, B is simply 8, and A is 2. So that isn't very hard to try to map that out. Now, what do we have here? The one thing that you should know that in standard form, we always make sure that your A, so this A right here, is actually positive. Okay, so keep that in mind. So for instance, you wouldn't be able to write, okay, so, so and leave it something like this, right? So let's say if it was negative 2x, and I'll make another new one up, let's say plus 5y minus 1 is equal to 0. So if you do notice that your a is negative, then simply just multiply by negative 1. So you can multiply this entire thing by negative 1. So then all of these variables will obviously change. Well, except the zero, the zero will stay zero. So you would have 2x minus 5y plus 1 is equal to zero. So notice the sign changes. So in the standard form, we keep the a positive. All right, so that's what we would have. And now with these standard forms, we can do several things that you should be comfortable with. So I, I want to go over are actually the following things. So for instance, taking the standard form and changing it back to the slope intercept form uh, or vice versa. So I'm gonna give you an example of that. Now, if you are given a standard form, you can graph the lines either using a table of values or what I like to do is I just simply switch it back into the slope intercept form. And in the video that I actually told you to watch up, up, up above at the start, um, I go over the details of how to graph those. And then finally, you know, for vertical, okay, and horizontal lines, um, you will notice that the standard form has a special form because for vertical lines, the B is actually equal to zero, so it looks kind of funny. And then for the horizontal lines, A is equal to zero. And again, it looks a little bit funny. All right, so let's get started. So first from standard form into the Y is equal to MX plus B form. So in this format, all you're doing is you're really just isolating. So I will take the examples that we have there. So for instance, let me just take the first example that we started off with. So that was this one right here. So I'm gonna copy it, bring it down, okay, and paste it. So this is in standard form, and if I want to change it back into the y is equal to mx plus b, which is the slope and intercept form, I am basically just isolating this entire thing for y. So you have to be comfortable in moving terms around, so, so solving for an unknown. So what I will do is, okay, I'm going to bring this 2x over to the other side, so you're going to get 8y, Okay, minus 10 is equal to negative 2x. All right, so that's the first thing that I'll do. Now you, of course, are gonna bring this negative 10 also to the other side. So this is gonna switch over to this side as well. So you're gonna have 8y is equal to negative 2x. So that sign will change, so 10. And now you have shifted it over. So we're almost there. 
And now all you're going to do is you're going to divide by the B that you have. All right. So for this B, okay, so we're going to divide by eight. So we're going to divide both sides by eight. And we're going to get our answer of Y is equal to, now it's negative two over eight, which you can reduce to negative. Okay, so it's going to be X over four, because notice that two goes into eight uh, four times. All right, and then your 10 over eight, so this is going to be plus, now 10 over eight. So again, the 10, and the eight, so this reduces to five over four. So I am reducing, so you do have to know a little bit of fractions, as you can see, everything kind of ties in together. And that's what you would have. So in this case, your slope M is equal to, so that would be negative one over four, that is your slope, and then your intercept is just five over four. And so from here, you can go ahead and graph this if you wanted to by using the slope and the y-intercept, so the rise over runs. So that's what you do if you wanted to change it back into that uh, y is equal to mx plus b format. Now, what if we wanted to go in reverse? So what if somebody gives us um, this kind of y is equal to mx plus b? So I wanna just show you what happens there. So now again, what you're gonna do is you're gonna move everything to the left-hand side. So I'm going to just delete this here, and let's say we were starting, okay, from our slope-intercept form. So because we wanna have everything on the left-hand side, so what we do is we're going to shift all of these. So we're gonna shift this, and we're going to shift this over. All right, so I'm gonna shift it over to the opposite side, so both of these will go, so nothing will be left over on the right-hand side. And I'm gonna put so that your X is first, right? So if you move that over, you're gonna get X over four plus Y, and then the uh, five over four is gonna be negative five over four is equal to zero. Now, if you stop here, you'll say, well, look, this looks kind of weird. It doesn't look at all like what we started off here. And the reason is because in your AX plus B form, so one thing I guess I should have mentioned in the beginning, is that we do like to keep um, our A, okay? So our capital A, all right? So it is A, X plus B, Y plus C is equal to zero. So we like to keep the A, the B, and the C just as regular integers, right? And then remember, your A is supposed to be positive. So if we want to do that, right? So we have to get rid of the fraction. So we're gonna have to multiply both the left-hand side and the right-hand side so that we do only have um, just integers all across, all right? So I do notice, okay, so that I have a denominator of four in both cases. So I can get rid of this four by multiplying both sides simply by four. So if I multiply this entire thing by four, okay, so if I do that, okay, so that's going to get rid of this four at the bottom. So first I'm gonna get X, all right, because four and then the four at the bottom cancels, plus, so now it's gonna be four Y, okay, so that four actually distributes across all right, so basically what you're doing is this, and then you're distributing this across to every single term. And then finally you're gonna get negative five, well, and then four times the zero, because you're also multiplying this side by four, so that's just gonna be zero. And there you have it, that is your A, uh, X, uh, plus, uh, sorry, AX plus BY plus C form. And again, you know, you might say, well, it doesn't look like the one that we started with. Um, now, if you want it to be exactly like that, where your A is equal to two, you can still multiply this by two if you want to, but you don't have to do that, all right? So the key thing is with this AX plus B, Y plus C, it is not a unique form you can have this exact same line, and because you can multiply both the left-hand side and the right-hand side, um, you know, the equation might look a little different, okay? Because now if I multiply this by two, I'm gonna get two X plus eight Y minus 10 is equal to zero, but it is still the same line. And that's the interesting thing, that it's, it's exactly the same line that we have, all right? 
So that's how you can transfer both into the slope y-intercept form and then backwards. Uh, so it's just some algebraic manipulation that you have to do, okay? Now, so that's this one. In terms of graphing, so providing a table of values, so if we do have our example, so if I take this example right here, I'm gonna copy it, you can certainly create a table of values in this format, right? So if you recall, so our regular table of values, so we would have our X and our Y, so our X is our independent variable here, so this is X and then the Y, and you can arbitrarily pick whatever it is that you like uh, for this particular line. I always like to make it easy on myself in terms of finding the points. So I typically will pick X is equal to zero because it nicely cancels things off. So in that case, what you will have is you're gonna have two times zero is gonna be zero, and then eight Y minus 10 is equal to that. And as you may recall, this is just gonna give you your y-intercept, all right, because you're substituting x is equal to zero. So what we have is eight y minus 10 is equal to zero, and now solve for y. And then when you solve for y, okay, you're gonna get five over four. So that could be one of your points, and this is just your y-intercept, all right? And now again, you can pick whichever x that you like. I mean, you can pick x is equal to one or x is equal to two. Um, what I like to do again to make it easy on myself is I actually, for my second choice, I typically will pick, for instance, y is equal to zero. And the reason is because that will give me the x-intercept, right? So where the line intercepts the x. And if I do that, then what I'm gonna have is, so two, x plus eight, okay, so times zero minus 10. And if I solve for this, so this is two x minus 10 is equal to zero. So bring the 10 over on the other side and you will find that x is equal to, so dividing by two on both sides, I'm gonna get five. So that would be your x intercept and then your y intercept and then plotting it um, on the coordinate system, I will leave up to you. And again, so I have discussed that in the previous uh, video, okay? So that link that I showed you at the start. All right, so this is what you have there. So I encourage you to try to um, plot these on your own. And now if for whatever reason in the course that you have, maybe your teacher already provides you the table of values and you have to fill it, fill it, fill it in, um, then you just simply substitute and then solve for your unknown and that's how you would use it Okay, so the other way of course, which is the probably the way that I prefer um, It is to simply just change Your standard form back into the y is equal to mx plus b form So your slope and intercept form and then that way so for we did that above here so once you have this form you can use your y-intercept and then you can use your slope, your rise over run, in order to graph the line. And um, that's very convenient to have. So you have kind of two nice, easy ways of uh, graphing. All right. So now the next item, okay, so in terms of vertical and horizontal lines in standard form, okay, so if I talk about this, so remember, so if you have a vertical line, so if I uh, draw some line in this coordinate system, and let's say I have a vertical line like this, you you know you may remember that this the the actual f formula for this, or basically the uh, equation for this, is x is equal to some intercept, and that intercept let's call it a, all right, where this is crossing through a right there. But in the regular, um, the standard form, you know, you know that you would have to shift this A over to the other side. So what you would get is X, all right? And then this would have been minus A is equal to zero. So really from our form, so A, X plus B, Y plus C is equal to zero. Okay, so notice that when it is a vertical line, your 
B is equal to zero. And this is what I point out over here. So B is equal to zero for vertical lines. So this term will be gone. And what you will have is you're going to have something like this. All right. So that's going to happen to vertical lines. So don't get confused. And then you can solve for X. And then when you solve for X, you're going to come up with something like this. All right. Where that small little A is not the same as the big A. Okay. So that's what you would have. So for instance, you know, if we take so this example, and let's say we have three X minus seven. All right, and you get something like this in standard form. Well, then solving for this, so if I shift the seven over, so that's gonna give me seven. So three X divide both sides and you're gonna get seven over three. And that just simply means that it's a vertical line that goes through seven over three and it goes straight up and down, okay? Now for horizontal lines, okay, so a horizontal line, so we have something like this, where the line goes from left to the right. And in that instance, what you will have is you're going to have, so our equation AX plus BY plus C is equal to zero. So in uh, this instance, what you will have is your A is going to be equal to zero and it will be some b y plus c is equal to zero format all right and again you can just solve for y if necessary to find exactly where it crosses the y-axis and this has a flat slope so basically zero slope and that's all that you have there so that's what i wanted to mention in this standard form so this video hopefully will help those who are interested in it all right Okay, so we'll see you in a future video. Thank you for watching. Okay, so hit thumbs up if you liked it. Bye, everybody.